l'habitude d'aller dans les fonctions de pourquoi bah, On a un peu décidé en parallèle avec Claude. Maintenant, médecine et pharmacie sont regroupées, en fait, c'est trop commentaire. Bah justement, j'ai participé à un film, en fait, sur les différents métiers en pharmacie, qui est assez intéressant. Je vous de le regarder, et puis après on en discute. Choosing a profession is very difficult. As a pharmacist, I would like to talk about the profession that has occupied most of my life. I would like us to consider other aspects of the industry, that is biology, hospital, research and distribution, which I will explore before discussing the international dimensions. If you ask me to define pharmacy, I would say the pharmacy is a shoulder on which hangs an entire population. As a pharmacist in charge of care homes, you can easily identify with this definition. You always find the right resources to alleviate the inevitable mysteries of people's life. Whether it is for breast prosthesis, custom belts, high protein oral nutrition, entera or parentera, packs braces, cans, wheelchairs, liquid and gaseous oxygen, incontinence accessories, when you run out of resources, there is mostly a lot of explaining to do as well as lots of apologies and having to convince and comfort the person in front of you. But what a joy and what a return on investment. I studied pharmacy at the University of Lyon. In my fifth year of study, I chose the option industrial pharmacy, which allowed me to start my career in the pharmaceutical industry as manager of a pharmaceutical technology department. Then I went to work abroad in the Netherlands, where I worked in the QA department of a major international group. After a few years, I decided to return to France. At that time, as a mother of two children, I decided to start working in a pharmacy. It's a customer contact job. We follow closely our customers' health, their pathology, and any chronic problems they may have. We are here to advise, to assist, and to discuss various treatments. We are here also to check whether the clients follow their treatment correctly thanks to the computerized historical records. We try to help the patients in the best way we can. We also answer young mom's questions about breastfeeding and about caring for their young baby. It's an interesting and it is an aspect of the work that I particularly like. Each one of us brings his own contribution to the team, depending on their qualifications. Actually, we have a good and united team of pharmacists. Without each other, we could not work effectively. The back office work, placing and uh, receiving orders, storage, etc., are also very important. The profession of pharmacy is extremely regulated for the well-being of the customer and patient. The patient expects us to be highly skilled and highly competent and readily and easily available, full of humanity for them. It is a profession where on a permanent basis we have to deal with people who are frail, fragile and vulnerable and who may at times need psychological and health support. This part of the pharmacist's job is very important. It makes people have a very high expectation of us. To practice this profession in a community pharmacy, if you do not like the customers, then you should find another job.
Sorry, I'm bothering you. What about this armchair then? Okay, I'll explain briefly again. You understand how to charge it, don't you? What's important is that this part of the leg must be parallel to the seat, whereas here it's being squashed a little. It's better to have a tilted position. Your husband must always have the flat of his feet in contact with the footrests. We'll see about that tomorrow morning. That's what we'll do. You can't count on me, you realise that, don't you? That's fine, but we do count on you. The patient highly expects from us a continuous program of education. And these are the tools that prepare us to face the challenges that the patients are facing. And they will not be very happy with us if we are not very trained. Also, continuous program of education is very important for us because it enthuses us and it makes us good pharmacists. And it makes us very professional. It gives us the good competencies and very useful and efficient pharmacists. In France, 22,000 pharmacies spread smoothly on the whole territory. They welcome 5 million visitors each day. There are 28,000 licensed pharmacists who are helped by 27,000 deputy pharmacists and assistants. Pharmacists are required to keep abreast with latest innovations by continuous education. A day does not pass without searching for a thorough information in a reference source. Alors, le mécanisme d'action, je ne sais plus par cœur. Donc, niveau nord gestrel. 917. Voilà, alors, donc, niveau propriété, donc projet statif de synthèse. Donc, le mécanisme d'action, oh, voilà, c'est tout à fait ça. Donc, un effet contraceptif par blocage de l'ovulation, mm -hmm. voire aussi en empêchant l'implantation de l'œuf dans l'utérus. Donc, efficacité 95% des cas, si prise dans les 24 heures. Et après, le pourcentage diminue maximum, donc il faut le prendre dans les 72 heures. Ça Oui. Ça va sur le positionnement de tolérance extrême euh, Je pense. Moi non, mais bon. <rire> There are varieties of training for pharmacists. Sometimes it is traditional, organized by a school of pharmacy or a specialized institution, or by laboratories directly to pharmacists. The benefit here is that the whole pharmacy team receive training and information. Alexander Coutet, a trainer at Avin Pharmaceuticals, works in this industry after adding a business degree to his pharmacy degree. I was attracted by the course. I like the fact that the job involved being in contact with the public, the problems that arise, the over-counter chats that are part of the job, and I really like the fact that I'm free to work independently day in, day out. If I had to qualify my job in relation to my formal education, I would say it was very versatile. I think that's the word that most closely corresponds to the extent of knowledge we are taught, especially the opportunity to choose from such different career paths. It is true that going from criminal investigation to research or an analysis laboratory to a hospital pharmacy are all totally different professions, yet they are all covered by one single qualification, pharmacist.
Ça va, je ne vous ai pas trop fait souffrir Non. Bon. Je vais mettre un coussin parce que vous pouvez desserrer votre poing. Hmm? Vous pouvez desserrer votre poing. Votre date de naissance, je suis très curieuse. 24 curieux. février. 24 février. Très bien. Voilà. Merci. About 8,000 pharmacies are biological pharmacies in France. Genevieve Ferry is a biological pharmacist. She established her own laboratory and applies very strict security measures. Since an analytical laboratory is a potential breeding ground for bacterial, viral and mycological infections, absolute hygiene must prevail. The first tube for the extraction of blood is connected to the automate machine and this becomes what we call the primary tube. The tubes are kept separate so as to prevent errors of exam identification, of course. I watch the streaking action of urine samples on the culture in the Petri dish. We identify and isolate all the bacterial species in the urine sample. We do antibiotic sensitivity tests to find which antibiotic works more effectively. What kind of antibiotic is effective against the bacteria? For example, E. coli. There's no risk whatsoever. On the same day, we carry out 90 identifications and 90 antibiograms. You analyze urine, blood, feces sample, everything. Vaginal, urethro, phlegm, culture samples, cell samples are all analyzed. In this laboratory, we have a room dedicated to bacteriology in particular. For example, in the analysis of water, it seems extremely basic. This analysis needs three incubation temperatures, 22 degrees, 37 degrees and 41.50 degrees. Simply to answer if or not the water is bacteriologically conformable. In biology, we do not say drinkable, but conformable or not conformable. There is no in-between solution, because the answer is either a yes, you can drink the water, or no, you can't drink the water. The medical biology is a line of work that seeks to do exactly the right thing. We have to give an answer to the patient's needs, get precise results because it's the beginning of diagnosis or adapting the treatment. It's essential for this result to be correct. Far upstream from the drug usage lies research. Caroline Moire Lal has opened her laboratory's doors to us. I've been recruited at the University of Lyon in the Faculty of Pharmacy as an assistant professor to teach firstly biochemistry, molecular biology, biotechnologies, and do research in oncology. 
Based on my experience in research, I've proposed new courses on oncology in the Faculty of Pharmacy. I specialized in breast cancer research field. My topics relied more on biomarkers than drug targeting. I'm working in an important comprehensive cancer research center at the hospital Léon Béra. And we interact with other team researchers, for example, with interest in drug design. What sort of approach do you use? We work with tumor cells, patient cancer tissues and mice models. There are some families that apply for genetic consultation. We analyze blood samples to identify genetic inheritance mutations. What we find very important here in these living cells is the expression of a protein that makes chromosomes phosphorescent. The green particles are the chromosomes, so you can analyze what happens to a broken chromosome in a single living cell. We see them at different times in different cell cycles. It goes very quickly and at the end they get separated. They decondense and we see the DNA when it breaks down. That's magnificent. It takes hours and hours of work to analyze all the data and the PhD student who has done these experiments has been working very hard. What we're looking for is interesting in the purpose of knowledge of the genetic instability that appears during cancer progression because we're looking for isolated chromosomes separated from others. We cannot see clearly here, but there's a dot corresponding to a single chromosome. I'm looking for anomalies in the mechanisms involved in the chromosome separation in the cancer tissues. In developed countries, one woman out of ten is affected by breast cancer. France is one of these. Unfortunately, we aren't alone. USA and other countries are also involved. Je me suis fait opérer en septembre 2008. En 2008, voilà. donc vous avez besoin de changer votre prothèse. Oui, voilà, parce que j'ai une mastectomie totale. Donc on va essayer, si vous voulez. Oui. Donc on a vu euh, que votre, votre, votre taille, donc celle-ci, il euh, y a une notion de taille et une notion de profondeur de bonnet. Je relève donc, tout, oui. Voilà. Donc, Très bien. Euh, voilà. Donc euais... euh, on, on va peut-être vérifier la, 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 la taille. Voilà. Donc euh, celle-ci, oui, c'est même un 4. Ah oui, elle, elle est euh, asymétrique. Euh, elle va sous le bras. Euh, voilà. Comme ça, voilà. En fait, parce que moi, il me manque un peu de. Oui, Là, j'ai oui, un peu oui, un oui, creux oui, en oui, fait. Oui, 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 Donc pas trop quand même, pas, voilà, trop, pas, pas trop, trop prononcé. Voilà. En fait, c'est là, oui, qui m'en... Enfin, c'est pour euh, le galbe, en fait. Oui, 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 pour, oui, pour compenser, bomber. Voilà, pour voilà. compenser le galbe. Voilà. Voilà. Et avec une petite... Euh... Voilà, pour compenser le galbe. D'accord. Putting on a breast prosthesis is rediscovering one's mental body image, resuming one's body integrity. Therefore, it is a very important step, breast being the symbol of femininity and motherhood. Five thousand five hundred pharmacists work in the hospital environment. I went to the faculty of pharmacy in 1988, a long time ago. I spent five years in faculty of pharmacy and one year in hospital. In the final year, 
you choose to go to the community, industry or hospital. After four years, the best students gain internship at the hospital. I passed the internship examination. Afterwards, I joined the army for national service. I had four years internship, two years as a pharmacist assistant, and afterwards I had the opportunity to work in the Hospice Civil of Lyon, in Lyon Bernard Center, or in industry. I chose to work at Lyon Bernard Center. Here, the heart of the pharmaceutical activity, we make sterile pockets containing chemotherapy products. Naturally, it's me who is in charge of these activities. I am in charge of the unit of production for immunotherapy, which is the second or third largest unit in the whole of France. We produce for hospitalized patients and also housebound patients. We have to work under sterile units. Here we are in controlled atmosphere, very clean and sterile. The product is controlled once for the first and final time. The person who prepares the batch gives me a good production and another person will control the first person's work. Two persons verify the quality of the product and also verify the quantity produced and then sign for this. There are a lot of new products. There are great changes with the arrival of a new class of medicines. We can say that since 1995 or 1996, chemotherapy has not stopped increasing its activity. It is really an active sector which is changeable, moving and is stimulating. There are products which are very expensive. They could be 1,500 euros per milligram. In a sterile pocket, we could have as much as 5,000 euros. Major progress has been made, notably in breast cancer treatment, where a patient who had a particular cancer, which we call EH2R2 positive, has favorable reactions to chemotherapy. Women are now able to survive for the same length of time as patients with much less complicated cancers. We then stick a, an identification ticket on the product and send it to the user service. It's a personalized production which resembles industry. Times are very interesting in the pharmacy and in the faculty. J'ai eu une contre-indication Priorix euh, Célestène. Le Célestène, d'accord. Voilà. Euh, par contre, je n'ai trouvé, trouvé, pas trouvé d'informations dans le Vidal concernant en fait, les délais à respecter entre, entre l'administration le vaccin de chaque et, et, la voilà, et la cortisone. Et la cortisone. La dose qu'a qu eu l'enfant, c'est 3,9 mg, donc ça, ça correspond à 312 gouttes. D'accord, donc il faudrait qu'elle reçoive 312 gouttes pendant 14, 14 jours, jours pour que la contre-indication voilà. soit... Euh, Alors que là, le nourrisson a eu que 40 gouttes oui. et oui. pendant un jour. Voilà, c'est ça. Donc il n'y a aucun souci. Donc, donc contre-indication n'est pas significative. Il n'y a aucun souci de, de, par rapport au vaccin. Pour rassurer les parents. D'accord. Okay.
<laughs> I'd like to know what sort of mushrooms are they? Where did you find them? In a lawn. This is a splendid mushroom. Magnifique. It's beautiful. It's an incorporated tricolor, Tricholoma aggregatum, and it has a very ordinary taste. It's not really much bother, but it's a beautiful mushroom. It's better not to eat it. You can eat it, but it doesn't offer anything, culinarily speaking. There you have rosy meadows. It needs rubbing a little because in these varieties, one of them gives diarrhea and yellows very quickly. <laughs> the one giving diarrhea yellows immediately. On the other hand, you have coprin chubler here. See these small squames? It's a mushroom delicacy. It is excellent, especially when it is young. I'll be able to cook them this evening for my family. There's no problem. It takes 10 to 15 years of research to design and develop a drug. Once the drug is marketed, it is patented for 10 years on average before falling into public domain where the formula can then be copied in order to make generic drugs. 3,400 pharmacies are registered to l'ordre de pharmacien, the pharmacist regulatory body in section B, the industry. The drugs can be the product from the animal origin, opotherapy, mineral or vegetable as we have here at Boiron Pharmaceutical, the world leader in homeopathy. My father started up the laboratory and was the first to become interested in homeopathy. When I discovered homeopathy, it wasn't considered the same as it is nowadays. You went into homeopathy like you went into religion, and the people who chose homeopathy refused to consider any other medicine, whereas those who followed other medicines, homeopathy? Oh no, never. And it was the same for doctors. On one side there were the homeopaths, and on the other, the others. Today, as Montaigne, the French writer, would say, nowadays our brain works better. We realize there are good things everywhere. Everything can be interesting if used wisely. In my opinion, that's right. The pharmacist must know the different therapeutic strategies available to him and especially available to his customers. It's our role to provide the best service, and what is the best service? This is the best choice, adapted to each stage or each problem in life. We don't know exactly how homeopathy works. That's the problem. We know it works, not how. Some say it strengthens the body's defences, while others say it does nothing. How it really works, we ignore. In my case, I see something like a catalyst-promoting reaction. Homeopathy is most of all adapting a therapy equivalent to the aggression. So in the beginning, it's the use of homeopathy alone. Or, it can provide help for people when under heavy medication. Unfortunately, there are more and more, and they find this very difficult to bear. Homeopathy is there to help in this case.
More and more farmers are turning to homeopathy treatment. Why? To avoid giving antibiotics all the time. These are only used when really necessary, otherwise they would no longer be able to sell their meat. Mastitis of the cow, calving going wrong, all this can be cured by homeopathy. And the world of homeopathy is progressing because people are listening to their bodies, to their needs. And they're asking for more natural responses and less aggressive treatments. This corresponds to a real demand. In France, for instance, the number of households using homeopathy medicine has doubled. Lyon, the birthplace of homeopathy, is also the capital of vaccines, including Sanofi Pasteur. The importance of vaccines is well established, but for developing countries, vaccination is a providential method of treatment, because it is inexpensive and very effective. Polio, tetanus, these fatal or severely debilitating diseases can be eradicated, a pretty word. The Association of European Pharmacy Students is very active in Africa. Mehdi Zegal, a young Tunisian pharmacist, tells us of his experience. The major project that we developed last year is a humanitarian project that we realized in Uganda. It's called the Mobile Pharmacy of North Uganda. We undertook this project in collaboration with an NGO that carries out many projects of this type. It's pure humanitarian. We work to give first aid to a village of political refugees because Uganda is a victim of civil war for many years. This project lasted six months and it gave me much pleasure to participate as a student and manage it by students for students. It is very rewarding when, for example, making the report, to see all these figures, all we have achieved in six months, it is impressive. It is really rewarding for us as an association of students to undertake a project of this magnitude. To finish, we are really happy with all the investment we have made. This experience was very interesting, very rich, and it will certainly serve us. It helps to enrich oneself. In France, pharmacies have the monopoly of the supply of drugs. This situation is heavily attacked, but at this time it is against the law to sell drugs outside of a pharmacy. This restriction to free enterprise is accepted by the European authorities, who understand that the member states must be able to supply with a guarantee of quality and security. As an example, there are 50 times less deaths from paracetamol in France than in the United Kingdom, who has a much less restrictive system. We're not really interested in aligning ourselves with the rest of Europe, because we believe our system is the best in the world, of course. So, geographical location of our pharmacies and the first-class network it provides makes it very difficult for us to show an interest in what's happening in other countries where they have one chemist for 8,000 inhabitants while we have an average of one chemist for 2,500 inhabitants. 
This is why I feel the French would not benefit from looking at the Swedish or Dutch ex example. Then of course we have the problem of ownership. In France pharmacies are owned by pharmacists and Europe is putting a lot of pressure on us to bring our system in line with other countries where pharmacies are owned by people outside of the business who often have nothing to do with the profession at all. For the time being, we don't want to change our ownership system, whereby the pharmacist is master of the tools of his trade and is able to remain professionally independent, especially with regards to customers, so pharmacists can work to maximum efficiency. So for now, we prefer to keep our system in place, whereby the pharmacist is the titled owner of his or her business. J'ai un client pour qui on délivre tous les mois quatre euh, seringues remplies d'aranès. Et notre grossiste nous en fournit deux par deux, enfin pas toujours. Donc j'aurais aimé savoir comment est-ce qu'on The drug chain in France, production, distribution, dispensation, allows a strong control of the traceability of a drug from its origins to its storage. The key link in the chain is the wholesale distributor. They buy the drug from a manufacturer and then distribute them to the pharmacies. These institutions are under the responsibility of a pharmacist who ensures the quality of all pharmaceutical acts. An important dispositive in the face of the increase in global counterfeit drugs. In my experience, we have never had any problem in that respect, meaning the system will grow stronger until, from 2011, wholesaler distributors will be obliged to implement a system to trace products. This means that laboratories will have to provide us with information on product batch numbers so we can add it to our database and in turn give it to pharmacies buying the products. The laboratories supply what we call a data matrix which enables us to read the batch number, the CIP code and the expiry date of each product. In this way, if a batch number is faulty, we have an in-house database capable of identifying the defective products. Today, the future of the French system is subject to uncertainties. The moving regulatory context, internet sales, the increase of counterfeiting are all effects which must be taken into account. These evolutions call for a global reflection. The Council of the Order of Pharmacists is reflecting on the creation of internet sites as dispensaries guided by the general principles of the public health code to which all pharmacists are subjected. The order is a very interesting concept because it is a way into our everyday job which I think we can safely say is somewhat restricted. We do not seem to realize that there is a life outside of our pharmacy, that we have peers. Thanks to the order, when we leave our pharmacy, first of all we understand that we are not the only pharmacist in the world, then we also realize that a number of other people or structures actually exist. It helps us take a step back from our profession to see it from another angle and with less apprehension whenever things don't go as planned. Today, the order of the National Council, in cooperation with the Ministry, is looking into the question of the Internet and the possibility of selling medication via the web. But within a strictly controlled environment, because the websites that already exist today cannot be monitored. More often than not, they are established in countries where legislation is very lax and we, in France for example, have no means of control or action on forum websites.
I may be repeating myself here, but the French system, which goes from the industrial manufacturer who produces to the pharmacist who sells via the wholesaler who distributes, relying on one or several pharmacies to control this famous medication change, is a major asset for us. The change must not be broken. So an online operation to sell medication must ensure the chosen system is just as efficient as the traditional one that exists today. Approximately 60 or 70 percent of medicinal transactions over the web involve counterfeit supplies. We must be aware of this. Counterfeiting is one of the themes that IPF, the International Pharmaceutical Federation, is studying. IPF is an association with 2 million members worldwide. Meeting in Lisbon in 2010 for their annual convention, pharmacist leaders from 85% of the countries around the world intend to improve health worldwide in connection with WHO. They draw the ideal figure of the pharmacist as the seven-star pharmacist and offer conferences to increase and share knowledge. I have gone to every FIP meeting since 1988 and uh, the reason that I keep coming back to FIP is because I enjoy the diversity of different practice settings and the diversity of, uh, of seeing people and talk to people from different countries, uh, each of whom has a different perspective that enriches my view uh, of pharmacy in my own. Uh, but talking about the global issue of health care and tr uh, trying to help pharmacists play a bigger role in improving the quality of use of medicines uh, globally. But the credit does not stop here. IPF draws government's attention on major issues related to the drug of or its misuse. IPF is considering the entire drug cycle, the lawful or unlawful, discovery, delivery, effect, destruction, and deflection. Much attention is given to science, drug delivery, and patient monitoring. So FIP, by working with education, science, and practice, brings about optimal global health outcomes with the responsible use of medicines. As a collective group, we can make an impact on global health policy and health care in collaboration with our partners such as WHO, World Health Organization, and UNESCO. FIP develops policies at a global level. We have to think about how to implement policy at the national and regional level. We have reached a level where in majority of the cases wherever medicine and its rational use is concerned they reach out to FIP because FIP has established such a relationship with WHO they trust our involvement because they find it beneficial. There is a pharmacist and pharmaceutical scientist expertise. We uh, are working with the WHO uh, on adherence uh, to medicines uh, because we see that, that more than 50% of the medicines are not used correctly and that is in the developed countries, not the developing countries. Another uh, issue, uh, important issue is on the human resources uh, because you can see that uh, overall in, in, in the world there is a shortage of healthcare professionals and that means that certain tasks need to be shifted. And therefore, uh, we work together also with the WHO. What kind of tasks are pharmacists capable of, uh, of doing? Uh, and more and more uh, pharmacists are doing more and more also clinical tasks. Uh, if you, for instance, examples in the, in the, take the United States where 
uh, vaccination for, for flu vaccines are, are given by, uh, by, by, by pharmacists. Um, another issue, uh, of course, an important issue is, is the quality of medicines and especially the counterfeit uh, mm-hmm. medicines, the for uh, is It's, of course, an important issue uh, that we are uh, dealing with uh, and we are active in, in IMPACT, uh, which is the International Medical Products anti counterfeiting Task Force. With the Congress's income, IPF funds its own projects. In 2009, Vietnam has received assistance to eradicate paladuism and drugs against AIDS. In 2008, a global action to create the necessary conditions for a safe hospital anywhere in the world has been developed with the participation of Jacqueline Siruk. You've probably heard about the fantastic conference held in Baal in 2008, which resulted in the drawing up of 75 very popular resolutions, with 80% of participating countries reaching a, a consensus. These 75 resolutions were agreements and goals that each hospital would try to achieve and concerned hospitals from all around the world. In fact, they formed the basis of a worldwide vision of the future for pharmacists practicing their profession in a hospital environment. Counterfeiting is a constant concern for the FIP. These common rules face economic reality on the ground. In Africa, there is a parallel circuit, the pharmacy turf, where products enter the country illegally and totally ignorant vendors pose a major risk to a too confident population. Educating people is a goal, but their protection an immediate necessity. A talking book designed by pharmacists for an illiterate population will serve this purpose. It is a speaking book. It speaks as you open and you press uh, the, the characters. It speaks to you about what uh, it is talking about. So I, uh, it is a resource material that we think the pharmacists everywhere, not just in developing countries, will need to begin to intervene, uh, both in the community, both at home, both in the pharmacies, to teach people about safe medicine. We have 19 schools offering pharmacy in Nigeria. We don't have enough pharmacies to work in Nigeria. We, the other thing is that a lot of the pharmacies are moving to UK, to the US, and to South Africa. A lot more are also moving into the banking, communication, and so indeed we have shortage of pharmacies. We don't have enough pharmacies to work in Nigeria. I am part of diaspora, he mentioned earlier. The brain drain, people who leave to work outside of the UK or take up a new profession. I sort of fall into both categories except that I often work in Africa even though I live in France. I travel back and forth but I try to take something to my continent whenever I can, always keeping ethics in the forefront of my mind when there is a conflict of interests. What is sure is that the IPF brings a human dimension, allowing us to meet people from all around the world. To feel we are part of our own little world and more importantly, to use our knowledge at the highest possible level. The aim is to increase everywhere the health organization's beneficial effects and reduce its adverse effects, an ideal balance to raise a general level of health in the world. I think there are three things that we need for synergy. One is to have a common mission and in pharmacy it's improving the use of medicines and in healthcare it's improving health. So we have a common mission. The second is harmony and difference because each of us brings a different perspective to the table that can be uh, beneficial in a way where we benefit from another point of view. And the third is capitalize on change. 
and change is happening. And many people in pharmacy think that pharmacy needs to improve and get better. We need to be more important. And the only way that we can change or be more important is to change the way healthcare is delivered. So we have opportunities as healthcare changes and the economy uh, continues to struggle and people find different ways to afford healthcare, afford their medicines, and have access to a health professional provides more opportunities for pharmacists, in my opinion, than threats. So synergy. A huge reform of the education system worldwide must be undertaken at university level to ensure that all pharmacists play an important role in developing this symphony of a new pharmaceutical world about which I may have the task of writing the first few lines. The right to health care is now more or less constitutional in all countries. But that just serves to amplify the responsibility of stakeholders within the healthcare sector, among whom is one group at the forefront and directly accessible, the pharmacist, with an important responsibility to make a good impression and to act as a gateway into the world of healthcare. If you had to choose one word to describe your activity, what would it be? Doing. It's the most exciting time to be a pharmacist. Now is the time. Don't miss it. Servir, écouter, je pense. Et il me manque certainement un mot qui ne me revient pas maintenant, mais je pense aimer. Donc je conseille vivement les étudiants en pharmacie de, de s'ouvrir à l'international, de se toujours à côté associatif, d'intégrer, de, de voyager, de voir comment ça évolue à l'heure. On découvre de métiers sous, sous d'autres aspects en fait, ça permet vraiment de s'enrichir personnellement. Quand je regarde la carrière que j'ai faite, c'est une carrière absolument passionnante. Voilà ce que je pourrais dire aux étudiants, n'hésitez pas.